This started off as a project to get some decent reference for character topology, but then the idea grew. What we're doing now is we're, we're creating reference for the topology by body painting a, a new model, and then by 3D scanning them, it gives us the opportunity to take the model, uh, make a digital version of them, and repose them and re-topologize them uh, so that we can compare the topology. Oh, if, if you're able to put your leg back and then... So that we can compare the deformation of the joints from the real character to the CG character. My name's Olivia Galton. I am currently studying at Solent University doing makeup and hair design. I've been interested in body painting for a while, but I've never done something to this level and I thought it'd be really interesting. I found it really difficult at first in the practice learning to draw on the contours of the body and everything but I found the more I practiced the better it looked and I found the easiest way to do it in the end. We tried using paint but we found that it was a bit messy and it didn't dry and it would smudge. We also tried eyeliner pencil, but that also smudged and looked a bit messy. So we decided using a uh, liquid eyeliner and that was fine enough and clean enough to make the look we wanted. When we went to Shefton, it was really exciting. We got to meet the CGI team, which was really fun and they were really nice. We um, got to go in the makeup studios. This whole experience I've never experienced before. So me now knowing how to act with that like, professionally with people at studios, how to actually work with life models doing body painting is really going to help me in the future, especially because I want to go into the film industry. And then yeah. if we can get you to do a few snaps to reference snaps if you like. Also part of this project is the idea of trying to find some decent reference material for this topology because the only place you can get this kind of material is on the internet and as you all know any old Tom Dick or Harry can put stuff on the internet so and I've yet in my 15 years of teaching been able to find a decent topology reference where all of the bits of anatomy are modeled correctly. So actually what I want to do um, as well is to generate uh, a series of photographs which are reference that people can actually use to model digital humans and, and so on. So I'm Dave Ward here with Clearing the Studios and part of the capture team. Uh, this is one of our full body rigs. So it's a room, loads of cameras around, um, all various models, doing all various different jobs, using a technique called photogrammetry. So it's kind of triangulating parts of the body to make a 3D model. Um, they use it in film, um, all different kind of, uh, industries really. And um, this is portable, so we have to uh, move this whole room around and set it up and uh, it goes all around the world. Yeah, we can make 3 models out of it. So my name is Matt. I'm uh, head of capture at Clear Angle Studios. Um, here at Clear Angle, we have six full body rigs and uh, two head scanners. Um, we cover all aspects of VFX scanning uh, within the VFX industry. So that covers sort of full body scanning, high res full body scanning, uh, head scanning, um, uh, also environment scanning, set scanning, um, all that sort of stuff. It's, it's good fun.
you tell us more about the old studio body scan that you have? Uh, yeah, so our photogrammetry systems for full body scanning uh, consist of roughly 170 cameras, all DSLRs, all made by Canon, uh, various different body types. So we've got uh, Canon 5 DSRs for our high res head cameras, uh, we've got Canon 750Ds for most of our other cameras, and then we've got Canon 60 Mark 1s for all of our um, all of our lighting reference cameras, all of our look depth lighting basically. Um, we've got six systems across the globe. We've got four in the UK uh, and one in Canada and one in the US. Um, we try and cover as many shows as possible with those systems, obviously. Um, uh, we've got one which is permanently based in Shepparton, which is where we are today. And currently we've got two in Pinewood, uh, sorry, one in Pinewood, uh, and then we've got one heading out to Prague and one heading out to Budapest as we speak. Um, so they're going to be going on different shows uh, along with teams to run the systems. Um, and yeah, we, we basically can generate super high res uh, 3D geometry of characters scanned in uh, in our systems and then supply them back to production for them to use in post. You can come rather than like that, like here. Yeah. yeah. Like, oh, in here as well. Do you want to do it on the sequence too? Uh, yeah. I'll keep this one anyway. Yeah, cool, okay. Set five. Three, two, one. Did you get it? No, sorry. <laughs> should, we, should we do that as two separate poses? Do, do it again, but I just need to... Hang on, let we me get myself... We can do the top half and the bottom half separately if, if that's... If no, that's let's good. try it. Let's right. try it again. Give me 60 seconds, just so the images download and then I can wipe them. So this is where we take the 3D scan data from the life model uh, and we retopologize uh, to make a digital version of the character. Uh, then we will pose the digital version uh, and compare that pose to the pose we scanned in when the model made the same pose originally. So this is the 3D model that we scanned in. The scanner produces uh, 10 million polys. We've managed to reduce that down to 500,000 so that it's a bit more usable. You can see the poly data there. The next stage is to follow these lines that we painted onto the model to get a retopologized version uh, and that's what we've done here and you can see that they match up with the lines that we painted on this is now usable and animatable we've built up the rest of the model with head and feet hands that we didn't paint and mirrored it across to create a whole character then the next stage is, is to rig it so this is the rigged version of the character we can pick up the different parts of the rig and move it around. You can see that it's now animatable. And then we can use this rigged version to pose in the same pose as our body model was scanned in before. So here's one of the poses. And again, we're going to do the same exercise, retopologize that to match. And you can see there's the retopologized version. And then we need to compare the positions of each of the vertices in this model to the model that we rigged and posed in the same position and that looks like this. So in this example the grey outline is the rigged model uh, and the pink outline is the scanned in data so we know the pink outline is the correct outline. You can see there's quite a lot of difference between them and we can plot those differences so these get outputted to a spreadsheet. Um, the spreadsheet here has the input data from the scanned in model, the input data from the um, rigged model, and then the difference calculated. And then these are converted into color values, which we then output back. Uh, and these are the results of the color values. So in this middle image here, the whiter the image is, the more accurate the rigged model is to the scanned model, and the red is less accurate. And you can see most of it is quite inaccurate because it was very quickly rigged just to prove the pipeline out. The more useful information really is this information on the right uh, where the colors represent the direction of the error. So if it's red, then the uh, error is in the X direction, if it's green the error is in the Y direction, if it's blue the error is in the Z direction and obviously it makes combinations of colours between. So using this technique the plan is now to test this out using 
better rigging because this was done on a very basic simple rig to test the idea um, and ultimately then to, to try it out on a full uh, VFX digi double rig with muscle simulations, flesh simulations and so on. And then we can validate to find out how accurate those simulations actually are for a real person.